Hi, I'm Larry Kortkamp. Welcome to Biz Points TV, the show that introduces you to new and trending business topics, smart technology, and the people that make an impact in our local business communities. We've got a great guest on today that's going to tell you how you can save a lot of money in your business. We'll be back in just a minute to get it started. Create a stronger and more dynamic business. Larry Kortkamp, founding partner at the Kortkamp Group, talks with industry insiders about trending topics moving the needle for local business today. Here's your host, Larry Kortkamp. Hi, and welcome back to Biz Points. Today's show is exciting because it's teaching you how to save money. My guest today is Marshall Chapman. Marshall is a franchise owner with Expense Reduction Analysts. Marshall, welcome to the show. Hi, Larry. Thank you. Thanks for the opportunity to be here. I appreciate it. You bet. Um, you're here is an exciting presence today because it's always exciting for a small business owner to learn how they can save money and make more and put more in their pocket. So I, I began the show with a 30% number. How close to reality is that number? Yes, sir. We find that um, our, our expense savings are somewhere between 10 and 30% on average over all of the categories. Many times we have categories and expenses that are in excess of 40%. It just depends upon the particular category, but typically our clients save between 10 and 30% on their secondary expenses. You know, as a, as a business consultant myself, uh, mm -hmm. I kind of, I focus in on technology integration within a small business, but technology integration sometimes comes with a cost and, and a lot of small businesses don't realize how they can actually make room for adding new expense uh, by actually reducing some of the expenses they're already doing. And, and a lot of those are low-hanging fruit that people don't really see a lot, which is their, their rents and their phone bills or their electric bills or, or bills like that. Is that part of your success as well? Absolutely. In fact, we find many times that our clients are looking for additional funding for, client, for, uh, for capital expenditures. And we focus in on those particular areas, things like what you mentioned, phone bills, uh, electric bills, things of that nature, other things like uh, plant, plant supplies, MRO supplies, gases and industrial parts, those sorts of things that make your plant operate on a daily basis are areas where we find we can do some significant savings. Typically, these things are driven by our experts in each one of those categories. So those categories that you mentioned, uh, IT and telephone, for example, uh, we have over 700 in, uh, consultants worldwide that band together on the client's behalf to focus in on finding savings for each one of those areas. So we bring our, our category specialist, our expert. Many of these folks have been in these categories for decades, have spent their entire business career working in those areas. Many times they're on the supplier side previous to joining ERA, so they have very deep knowledge of how these supplier networks work, and we have the opportunity to bring that deep knowledge right to the forefront for our clients. So we go through the entire process uh, with that idea in mind. We are definitely focused in on solving that problem for the client. In fact, part of the power of our network is these 700 consultants are all independently working together. So if one of us doesn't find the savings in particular client, none of us get paid. So we're very focused in on finding those solutions for our clients and finding the best way to not only find better prices, but also better processes throughout their organization. So, you know, I always, I always get excited when I find hidden gems out there that a lot of people don't know. And, and your business is one of those. Uh, because you don't, most people when they hear that term consultant, they mm -hmm. think just someone's coming into their business, number one, that they're going to have to pay, expense out, and that person is going to create a laundry list of items that are serious that they need to make changes to, they're gonna give them that list, that report, and then they leave. But your business doesn't operate that way. You actually come in and obviously you help to identify those areas that need improvement or places where they can save money, but then you don't leave the party. You actually stick around. That's, that's right, Larry, that's, that's true. Uh, we stick around long enough to impart our knowledge to our clients. So ultimately, that's what we're really in the business of, is helping our, our clients find sustainability through savings. So we're looking to create that value and provide that for them across the board. So, so we're bringing in 
these experts, and they're making suggestions in the process as well as in the actual negotiation of the pricing for our for our clients. Which I think is key too. A lot of people think they've got to, you know, what am I going to have to give up, right? It's always a trade-off. Yeah, I can maybe save a couple of pennies, but I'm going to get something that's lesser service. It's going to be a lesser quality. It's going to be lesser, lesser, lesser. They think they're actually going to not have as much as they had when they started, which couldn't be farther from the truth. Oftentimes, what happens to them? Yes, so, so many, many times we find that even though we may keep the same supplier, which happens about 70% of the time, our clients actually find that their quality goes up and many times the price goes down. Um, and that's ultimately what we're looking for is an increase in the overall value that's actually that they get for their money. So we're trying to find ways to increase the uh, the market share that our clients have with that particular vendor. So we bring the entire weight of ERA to bear for our clients. So they look much bigger to our suppliers, to their suppliers. Which is always the key. Obviously, the more the more clout that you have, mm. it's not just better pricing. It's better servicing. It's better uh, communication between them and their vendor. Oftentimes, that make that happen. Um, a lot, of, a lot of companies don't realize that they are, they may be diversified too much in their supply chains or where they get mm -hmm. things. So having people come in from the outside, I often tell people you only have one chance to be new eyes on your business and, and too often they get caught in the weeds with their business and they've done it for so long this way. And even initially they may have done it for the right reasons. Mm -hmm. They may not have had the, the right amount of, of volume when they started with looking for vendors and this particular vendor fit that need for them. But, but today their situation may have changed and they just don't know enough to look at it. Insurance, there's some of these things are just, the, the, the easy parts to look at. Insurance is one of those things that if you don't, you know, if you're not staying on top of it, or if you're not fluctuating through different companies and, and looking at your current policies, you can easily overspend on, on types of insurance projects that you have. Some of the technology is, is changing quickly. So how you, app, you know, apply certain technologies to your business, it was good five years ago, but now it's five years later or it's three years later. You had told me that you kind of key in on four spots or four areas. What are those four areas? Yes, sir, uh, we do. We have a, a simple four-step milestone process that we go through when our clients engage us. Uh, we start with analysis and then we move to research and then we go through selection process and then finally we go through monitoring. So if we start with the analysis part, um, when ERA engages with a client, the very first thing we do is go through a deep dive analysis of all of their expenditures with those secondary expense categories. And we apply our ERA lens to that entire spend. Typically, it's about a 12 month AP report that we like to see. And we go through and give that a health check. So what we'll do is we'll find many times areas within the client's er spending that is just great. In fact, they're championship level. They're doing great in those things. But many times we find areas that need a little bit more focus. And we find that those are the areas that our clients don't necessarily have the expertise in. So they have the expertise in the first 80% of what they buy, the, the particular parts that go into their products that they're selling. They're very good at that. But it's the rest of those operating expenses that really get to be uh, a little bit overlooked when there's not enough time and there's not enough people on each one of those individual areas. Uh, take, for example, things like industrial gases. If that's part of your manufacturing process, but not part of the primary spend, then it's likely that you don't have somebody that's just focused in on industrial gases in your organization. And that's where we come in. We bring those specialists that focus in on that and do that research. So we research all the way through your entire AP report, find those areas, apply those, those experts to those particular tasks, and then we bring that to the table with what we call a, uh, a status report. So we, we tell our clients, this is what we found in a very detailed way that has all of the information written down. So we're very transparent. We don't hold any information back. We don't, we don't try to withhold any leverage from, from our clients. We're definitely becoming partners with them in this process. And, and throughout it also, uh, our clients also have uh, the ultimate decision-making authority. So there's nothing that we do that forces them into another area. For example, they may say, well, if you come in here, you may disrupt our supply chain and cause 
really pro big problems to happen between our, our suppliers and us. And if that's the case, then we can work with our clients to maintain the relationships with their, their current suppliers. We're certainly not here to upset the apple cart in every case. And, and certainly we're there to, uh, to present all of the information we find, like you said, in a third party, third party way. It gives a fresh perspective. I know, I, I, I know you've got four of these mm. and we've only kind of touched base on maybe one of those or mm. two of those. We're gonna take a quick break, uh, get some words from our sponsors, and then we'll be back. We'll be back to talk uh, some more with Marshall, find out a little bit more about his company and how he can save you money. My American Dream is to help you stay healthy and energized so you can live your American Dream. Our American Dream is equipping future generations of American Dreamers. My American Dream is to protect my community so they can live their American Dream. My American Dream is to bring you some spice and flavor to your life. Our American dream is ensuring what's most valuable to you. Our American dream is creating opportunities for healthcare providers so they can have their American dreams. My American dream is serving our business community and advocating for all of your American dreams. Business runs on technology and human beings are creatures of habit. Unfortunately, not all our habits are good. Technology, when it works, is supposed to make our lives easier, creating routines that allow us to protect customer data, track our progress, forecast the future, communicate better, and move much faster. So you need technology solutions that work when you're not working or simply not paying attention. Smart technology solutions, making the complicated uncomplicated. Hi, and welcome back to BizPoints TV. Today our guest is Marshall Chapman. Marshall's telling us how we can save up to 30% or possibly even more on the expenses that we incur every single day on our businesses. Marshall, when we left off, you were kind of going through a list of maybe the four top areas that you kind of focus in on when you first see a business. I think we kind of covered our first two. What do we have left to talk about? Sure, the, the last two are selection and monitoring. So. In the, in the selection phase, we've already gone through the analysis and, and gone through and seen where a business may uh, be able to save some money. And then uh, we've also gone through and in, the, in, in part of that second phase is actually going out and finding uh, those new pricing areas. So we've gone through a process with our client to do some interviews internally. So we get the, uh, to get the areas of importance for them. For example, on-time delivery may be a 10, a one out of 10 that may be a 10. Uh, we go through the process with all of the suppliers that we deal with as well, so we interview them. And if they're not delivery rated at a 10, then they don't make the tender process typically. So we go through, we qualify the vendors, and then we get RFQs and, and, and bids from them. We collect all that information, arrange it in such a way that it makes it very clear for the, for the client and we provide typically three options for them. And these options include most of the, most of the uh, vendors you have now, and then a mixture of ven existing vendors and new vendors, and then a, a third one that's typically mostly new vendors, so you can see kind of the, the areas that they, they move into. Many times clients will select one of those options or they can come up with a custom mix of their own. And then at that point, we, we go out and find those vendors and provide for them the, uh, uh, the request for purchasing. So our, our client actually takes those RFQs and goes out to the vendors and starts the new bidding, starts the contracts with them, the new process on those new bids. I know and you touched point, on it a little bit before, mm -hmm. we, before the break about some people might be hesitant, mm -hmm. you know, because if it's a very highly specialized area and you talked about uh, something having to do with gases involved mm -hmm. in their particular production, but I, I the part that I like about your business is these other, these other consultants, if you will, that you bring in, they're all like you. They're actually business owners themselves, franchise right. owners. And these aren't just people that are what we would think of as a consultant, a pencil pusher out there doing something numbers. These are people that are actually 
in-depth knowledge within the specific fields that they're talking about. So sure. when we say we don't want them to upset the apple cart with my vendor because my vendor supplies this particular part or this particular procedure, whatever that happens to be, the people that were actually getting that from your business that we're getting this advice from are people that are embedded in those industries. They are well versed on what that is. So I like our audience to know this is not just another name that you've come up with as a vendor. The reason you're providing these names, number one, it could be somebody they've done business with before, but it also could be these new people. But on the old side, if these are vendors that you've done business, but you have done business as you and as your business and as these other representatives from your firm, they may be familiar with this vendor in an entirely different manner. Maybe you do business at this volume, the guy that's coming in to talk to you about it is just the next volume or there right. on up. And sometimes it's not necessarily the relationship that you currently have, it's what the vendor may not have known about your business or maybe they weren't really skilled in, in understanding or explaining that to the vendor. That's so right. what they gain with this relationship, I know fear is a factor, but a small business person needs to be fear less when they talk about building their business to a certain extent. And somebody like you that comes in and offers that advice, you, you got to take advice for some of these skilled people that are in your industry that can help you. Yeah, yes, sir. That's absolutely true. In fact, like I mentioned before, we've had folks in these areas for decades that have operated around almost all of the, all of the vendors that are available. In addition to that, we're a worldwide organization and we share price benchmarking around the world with each other. So internally, we have benchmarks that we know should be met for each one of those particular categories. So all of those benchmarks are applied to our, our customers on behalf of the, our clients to those vendors. So we, we bring it to the table and we say, hey, look, we know we should be paying this much for these products because that's what we pay nationwide or maybe even internationally. So that's the idea is that we bring this, this whole entire network's knowledge base straight to the side of our, of our client. And most clients don't have that type of, of national or international reach with suppliers spread all across the globe. So Even larger companies don't sure. have that. Now with, with all this expertise and all this experience comes comes a hefty price tag too, right? You're gonna cost me a fortune. Aren't you? <laughs> Not so much, but um, th there's one thing we haven't talked about yet, Larry, and that's the, the monitoring phase that we provide as well. So really briefly, we, we partner with our client to monitor for the next 24 months in this process that the supplier does what he says he's gonna do. So we hold him accountable to his, to his, his offered prices as well as find leaks or possible changes within the organization during that 24 months. So really that's where the knowledge transfer happens from our organization to our client's organization. And ultimately what you asked, uh, certainly it does cost money at the end of the day, but only if we find savings for our clients. So ultimately our clients end up net higher when they hire us every time or they stay the same, they don't, they don't change at all. You even have a term for that within your business, right? Yes, sir. Success. Yeah, it's a success fee model is, is what it is. So, so unless, we, unless we save our, our clients money, we're not getting paid. Which so. is why you do so much analysis on the, on the front side. You exactly. really have a good idea of what you're going to encounter once you get into that. For sure. In fact, we, we know for sure that we're going to, by the time we engage with our clients to the point where there's any kind of consideration of a fee, we know that we're going to save money for our clients. There's no, there's no question. And they know as well. So uh, it's very transparent and open. Our clients understand what's happening throughout the entire process. And they're well aware that they're, you know, they have specific targets that they want to hit. Every client wants to try to save a particular amount of money. And they either make that money or, they, or we don't get paid. So uh, there's, there's many times uh, that we uh, know, like you said, during the research phase, precisely, everyone knows precisely what's going to happen over the next 24 months. So you, you touched on it lightly that you're an internationally known company. You have actually footprints all over the world. Uh, how long is, uh, let's go into a little bit more depth about the company. It's been around since 1992. 92. So yes, quite sir. a while. Yep. Um, when did you join the organization? I joined it earlier this year. Yeah. Uh, but obviously that's not your first onslaught into this type of uh, oh, no, business. Sir, so what, a little bit about you, Marshall. What is your, you're just one of the franchise uh, 
uh, cogs in this big wheel, but uh, yes, a little sir. bit more about you. Yeah. Uh, so for the past 20 or so years, I've been involved in factory automation, uh, helping companies update their factories uh, to find uh, new or more efficient ways of producing their, their products. So uh, all over the, the North Texas area, Oklahoma and Louisiana and Arkansas, it was my footprint and still is. And I've been involved with, uh, with helping companies become more efficient and less expensive to operate for about the last 20 years. So, Have you noticed a change in businesses due to the, the, the recent events of last year, the pandemic and so forth? Has, has, uh, has it been easier for you to talk to companies, not as easy for you to talk to companies? Are people more open to this type of outside assistance? Well, uh, to be to be honest, Larry, it's been it's been a tough it's been tough sledding with with trying to get folks to to communicate. Uh, there's been with the change in the pandemic, the, the the ability to get face to face with folks has has really clearly been turned off, and just getting folks to listen uh, for a few minutes is really tough because they're working so hard right now to make their co their company survive. So they're doing literally everything that they can. But you know, to, Marshall, to that's, we it. stress that. Here at the OBBM Network, we are advocates for small mm -hmm. and mid-sized businesses, local businesses, family-owned businesses. Mm -hmm. You know, when the sledding gets tough, you've really got to get tougher. You've got to do more. You've got to mm -hmm. market better. You've got to look at ways of making your businesses more efficient mm -hmm. and yet excel at being more profitable and, and, and in, in larger market space. There's so much more I still want to talk to you about. We're going to take another short break. We'll be back in just a minute to have another little bit more conversation with Marshall Chapman. We'll be back in just a second. We are being censored. America's news outlets no longer provide the truth. 90% of news outlets in the United States are controlled by six corporations. They're not out to tell you the truth of what's happening. They're out to tell you the picture of the world that they represent. The mission of the Epic Times is to chase the truth, to ground all statements and facts, and prevent people from being misled. The Epic Times is independent. We're not controlled by any special interests, and we never will be. The Epic Times is a non-partisan media. That means we don't stand for any political party. This is a battle, a battle between truth and deceit, a battle between forces that would ensnare this country in ignorance, and between a media that wants to present you with the truth. Subscribe today and join the Americans who are seeking truth and tradition. We'd love to have you on board. The OBBM Network acknowledges that this is a pivotal time in history, and it is clear the United States of America has been undermined by many of our elected officials for some time now. We want our local business audience to stand strong in the face of what we now understand and to be empowered to grow our businesses on the local level beyond the limitations that have been imposed upon us. We believe it is in our national interest to inspire our communities through strong economic development and, additionally, to hold our elected officials accountable for accurate representation of we the people. For that reason, we encourage you to go to WeStandForFreedom.com to learn about the National Write Your Congressman organization that has been the trusted communication tool for local communities for over 60 years. Learn how your representatives are voting. Understand the laws and regulations under consideration on the state and federal level before they are enacted at the county and city levels. Communicate directly with these officials and stand up for yourself, for by doing so, you will protect the communities you serve from tyrannical rule and unconstitutional reforms. The OBBM Network is the premier voice for local business, and we take that responsibility seriously. The OBBM Network has everything you need to grow and transition your business for success on popular syndicated podcast networks, Roku and other video channels, and the OBBM Network app. We work for you, local business, and we've got your back. Hi, and welcome back to Biz Points. We're talking with Marshall Chapman about saving you money in your business, but not only saving you money, but making your business more efficient, more effective at what it does, putting more money in your pocket, but at the same time, making your business uh, better at what it does, maybe increasing your market share in your particular industry, your market space. Uh, there's so many other gaining points that you get by bringing in qualified outside help 
We talk about this a lot on biz points, and I, I introduce you to experts that are outside your business for a reason. If you're a small business and you cannot afford to hire internal people that are super people that do all these things for you, that's why you need to look outside your business for some of these external helpers in a lot of different facets of your business, whether that's in finance and in baking, uh, industrial needs, whatever that happens to be. And I like Marshall's business because he's got a lot of that in one spot for you. Marshall, again, let's, uh, this is our last break, so I wanna, I wanna cover some of the areas that we haven't done for you in your mm -hmm. business. Uh, we've talked about some of the B2B type stuff, industrial, and, but you also do some retail, you do educational. Tell me some of the other areas of expertise that you, you work yeah, with. Yes, sir, um, yes we do. We work with uh, a lot of manufacturers, but we also deal with universities to help them find savings in, in areas like facilities management. Uh, we also deal with engineering firms uh, to help them figure out ways to save money. And like, for example, one one that had uh, a fleet across the across the country, fleet management was one of those ways that we helped them save quite a bit of money over a, over a few year span. Um, hospitals, not not for profits, are definitely one of our areas that we love to help, and and a and a host of other ones. Uh, it, it, it all just depends upon. Uh, the amount of money that, that that particular organization is looking to save. So if they're willing to, to go through the effort of engaging, talking with us, then typically we can find a way to help them. So those are the, er the we're not just limited just to manufacturing, in other words, it's definitely far wider than that. So there are many areas that we, we have folks internationally and, and in, all across the country that are, that are zeroed in on those particular areas. How about the B2C, the business to consumer, our retail friends? Do you do anything in that, in that area? Uh, we, do some, we do some things there. Um, there's a lot of warehousing that goes on in B2C, so we do definitely have some logistics folks that are capable of helping out with, with that sort of thing, e-commerce type things as well. Um, a lot of those, a lot of those areas are shipped. Their folks are shipping things these days. Quite. I was a bit. going to say, boy, don't undersell that portion of the retail side of the business. For sure, freight is a killer on on many levels within businesses. And when you start, B two B is one level because I can ship a pallet full. I can ship a crate full. Mm -hmm. When I get into those other areas, now I got to ship a onesie. That's to right. a person, the logistics are so entirely different in order to do that. And that's where you can spend a lot more money if you're not savvy or if you don't have enough sure. information to deal with. That and, and, and maybe not just the freight, but also the packaging. The packaging side of things there is very, very, uh, it, it has a wide range of pricing that you can find. And we find that many of our clients are, are looking for help in that area. For so, that, that so the monitoring side that we kind of touched on a little mm -hmm. bit, that's very important. You guys stay, stay in touch with your clients. You help them to not only identify the areas, you help them to implement mm -hmm. potential corrections or suggestions, and then you stick around to help them monitor. Can we that's talk right. a little bit about monitoring? Uh, in, in the IT world, they call it vendor management. They mm -hmm. actually negotiate on behalf. You actually stay as an active participant within this new solution that you have produced. Absolutely. Um, it, like, like I mentioned, uh, if our clients don't save any money, then, then we're not remunerated. So this is part of the 24-month period that we spend with our, with our clients, monitoring the, the behavior of our, of our vendors as well as our client to show the client the savings that they've received on either a month-to-month -month or quarterly basis. So we provide reporting that our client gets to, gets to review and, and approve on a, on a regular basis that's part of that monitoring process. During that process, things are uncovered uh, that the client is able to address at that time and, and incrementally increase those savings as well. So uh, it's very important that we do that because we're really looking to impart this knowledge and that's really where that knowledge really gets transferred very deeply to our clients because they get to review this information with that specialist, with the very person that went through all of the analysis and did all the negotiation and ended up back at the table with our client on a, on a regular basis for the next 24 months. And that information is, is freely imparted to them. And, and we're really looking to, to provide that value through insight with our, with our client base. So in the construction industry, we call them a general contractor. The general contractor is the guy that kind of 
gathers the troops, right? And he's mm. the main point of contract for contact for all the subcontractors that are involved. Is there a similar hierarchy that is that goes on with your business? Is there a is there some sort of a manager that's in charge of all the other moving parts that you bring to a business? Yes, in, in fact, our uh, our our business is is definitely made up that way, where we have project managers that are making sure that the solution delivery specialists, the folks that are this, the, the specialists in those particular areas, are actually performing and hitting their marks, as well as providing that information to our to our clients. So, for sure, we have we have those folks that are involved. Uh, typically, that's part of my my responsibility as a as a client acquisition and client manager uh, role within ERA is to is to make sure the client is getting all the information that they need, and that the solution delivery specialist, our our folks that are the experts, are delivering the information as well as getting all the information from our clients that they require as well. Obviously, so. goes back to what we don't we don't often know what we don't know, right? So it's in this in your own business it would it would apply as well. If I'm contracting with you, I don't really know everything that you can do for me. So sure. it, it makes sense that you have someone that kind of is that general overarching manager of some kind that helps to orchestrate the people on your behalf that does that. Yes, sir. Is it, when we get down, we kind of lightly talked on billing, is it still just one central bill though? I mean, it's, it's, yes. it's it, we're still only having a central face to the business for That's the most right. part. Yes, sir. Uh, the, the client doesn't have, um, I'm not getting really, six different bills from six no, different. No, no, no. It's just the it's just the one bill. <laughs> yeah, and then we take care of all of the all of the uh, uh, payments to everyone in the background. So, so our our internal uh, payment structure is transparent to our clients. Gotcha. And it doesn't matter. Um, it, it could be that our client has uh, two or three solution delivery specialists in their organization working on separate projects. So one may be working on freight. And another one may be working on packaging, for example, and so, that's transparent to them. So, Marshall, how can people get in touch with you? This sounds like a great idea. I want you to come out to my business. Where do I go? Sure. Um, you can find us at expensereduction.com. Uh, you can find me on LinkedIn, Marshall Chapman, and you can also uh, email me at uh, mchapman at expensereduction.com. I, I really appreciate you coming on the show today. This is, this is one area that's close to my heart. It's reducing expenses, improving efficiency in a number of different ways for businesses. It's customers just like this one, and I call them a customer because I'm selling them to you. You're buying them from us. You've got to look at outside your business in order to make it greater than it is. Always keep improving your business. Thanks for tuning in to BizPoints today. We hope you come back and look at the next episode. Have a good day. To be a guest or request sponsorship information, contact the Court Camp Group at 972-824-8001 today. Production and programming information requests for the OBBM network should be directed to Offbeat Business Media by calling 214-714-0495 or send your request to info at offbeatbusiness.com. This Points TV, podcast, and radio show are produced by Offbeat Business Media for the OBBM network. Unauthorized use of logos, audio, video, or reproduction is strictly prohibited.